Okay, so we have our first question here. Before we get into the question, let's take a look at some of the information that we have. Uh, so uh, bear with us as we sort of move along. Um, I'm going to go to the program first. So here's our company. It's called Jumpster or Jumpstarter or something like that. Um, and this is the uh, program for this project. So this is the information that the uh, owner gave to the uh, architect, gave to you, uh, in order to do the project. So the general information is uh, we're in Springfield. I was thinking about Shelbyville, but I ended up choosing uh, Springfield. Uh, the project is new construction for new office and accessory spaces for tech startup company. Uh, the mission is to provide a new state-of-the-art tech startup office and prototyping facility that brings joy and efficiency to the workers, enhances the neighborhood, and protects the environment. The goals you can start seeing, we have high performance, efficient, uh, efficient groupings for the office and departments, informal communications, a priority, uh, declares itself as the state-of-the-art headquarters that it will be, uh, it's open and transparent in its sensibility, uh, it's respectful of the neighborhood, but has a modern sensibility. Uh, let's see, it encourages transit options. It's impressive to visitors. Uh, it's meaningfully divided uh, into various groups to enhance production and communication. Uh, production and prototyping should probably be on the ground floor for ease of loading and unloading. The main administrative offices should be on the second floor. Third floor and fourth floor would be uh, for the worker minions. Probably wouldn't actually say minions in a real one. Uh, uh, organized around an inward focus of a courtyard and atrium to create a world of our own. The form should be layered to express flexibility and complexity of the work that's going to be coming inside. Natural light for all, everyone gets a connection to the exterior. So that's sort of the goals. Then you can start to see some of the data. We're not going to go through each piece of data uh, all right now, but you start getting a sense of it. Uh, the site is a 20,000 square foot site. There's a 170-foot street frontage on the main, in quotes, pedestrian street. And then there's a list of uh, numbers of employees by department. You may notice that it uh, comes to a total, Oop, uh, comes to that uh, total right there. Uh, but then it also asks uh, for the ability to have a growth uh, so that down the road uh, things can uh, get a little bit bigger. So the actual number they're really thinking about is that uh, 150 employees down at the end there. Uh, the building size that's uh, been assumed out of the program is 40,000 square feet above ground, including then a basement would be about 50,000 square feet, which is presumed to be a four-story building, 10,000 square foot per floor. And then each of the different departments has different square footages. Uh, there's some uh, pieces of information in there about uh, those departments. Uh, and that puts us at uh, right around that 40,000 uh, square foot number. Um, one thing you may notice is that the 40,000 square foot includes some things that are probably in that basement, and so that's also leaving open some possibilities for uh, what would presumably be the atrium slash uh, courtyard spaces. Uh, some uh, little bit of information down at the end, some conclusions and some uh, sort of restatement of the problem. Uh, create a four-story building that has a modern, sophisticated look demonstrated through its clever use of uh, layering and transparencies. The building should be efficient and environmentally well-balanced, giving everyone opportunities for fresh air and light, but uh, focus on the uh, clear opportunities for communication and efficiencies. Uh, so that gives you a sense of the program. Um, I think probably what would make the most sense is to take a look at the neighborhood image to, so we have a sense of kind of what's happening here. Uh, one of the things we notice is kind of an unusual looking site, but it's also, also clearly on uh, a major street. Uh, it also has uh, backup to a, a more uh, local street as well. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And we look at the zoning map to get a sense of what's happening there. So we note that the zoning map uh, calls it out as a B3-3. Um, and it calls out a few other things. We note that there's a, these big red stripes which refer to a pedestrian street. Well, we noticed that in the program as well. It called out the main street as a pedestrian street. Uh, clearly, this is something that is part of the zoning 
uh, and it's uh, one of those uh, elements where uh, there's a, sort of a presumed retail slash uh, kind of neighborhood important street uh, that is treated a little differently from some other streets. So this is different than a regular local street. This has uh, certain rules that uh, pertain just to it. The other thing you notice is that there's a transit station called out. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, uh, aerial photo and sure enough uh, there's a transit station there, there's a train line. So we're very close to a transit hub um, that may be meaningful to us. Uh, let's look at the uh, climate analysis. Uh, climate analysis is pretty uh, simple. Uh, it talks about that it's at a 40 degree latitude, uh, that it has reasonably cold winters, uh, averaging uh, 15 low, 35 high, but reasonably warm summers, uh, averaging 65 low, 85 high. Uh, and then in between for the spring and the fall, uh, talks a little bit about uh, some other aspects of the site. Uh, but then it gets into proposals and talks about natural daylight capture would be something that it would be looking for. Uh, the uh, idea of blocking the solar gain in the summer but accepting uh, good solar gain in the winter. Sort of a question, should we think about geothermal? Question mark. Uh, operable windows and uh, local venting uh, is something that uh, is uh, in the proposal here. Uh, that's sort of talking about that idea of kind of giving people more control over their lives. Uh, maybe that would be a good thing. Uh, maybe it makes people feel better about uh, their work situation. Uh, uh, controlled cross ventilation opportunities, uh, green roof uh, opportunities, uh, stormwater runoff would be handled with uh, uh, green uh, roof and porous pavers and French drains, uh, and then night sky lighting, meaning that the lights uh, face downward and are minimal on the exterior so that you don't confuse birds and create uh, a lot of excess uh, glow in the sky that uh, means people can't see the stars. And then things like uh, extra bike, uh, says rakes, should be rack, racks, um, and shower room, because we're interested in the idea of transit, uh, and we want that to be an important part of the site. So uh, that's what the climate uh, analysis is and its proposals. Uh, and then we have a few other pieces of information. Uh, here's a phase one uh, environmental report. Uh, this is just the executive summary. And it talks about, uh, if we get by the sort of niceties, uh, gets to uh, the actual executive summary, uh, talks about uh, the findings on the site, uh, and looks like they found an oil tank. Uh, if you see that uh, number one there, uh, starts speaking to, there's a, not a big deal, but a old oil tank for leftover from the previous use. Uh, if we start uh, kind of glancing through, we'll find some other materials. Uh, looks like a little bit of asbestos and maybe a little bit of lead paint here and there, um, but uh, no, uh, no major uh, findings other than that uh, oil tank and those small amounts of those uh, uh, asbestos and lead bits. When they did their research off-site, uh, they looked around um, and uh, really nothing jumped out other than uh, the, that oil tank and uh, those other pieces that, uh, that they talked about, so no other uh, major findings were found. The issues that they found, uh, how big a deal are they? Well, the oil tank is something that definitely needs to be dealt with. Uh, the asbestos and the lead, there's a moderate risk. It could be that it's not that big a deal but that more studies should really be done. So essentially this is a phase one saying you should really do a phase two. Uh, and then in terms of the recommendations, you can see there's that uh, uh, phase two report should be required uh, and starts talking about uh, where the uh, uh, probes should be done and the sampling should be done uh, for that uh, uh, oil tank. And then there's some cost estimates down at the end. And then if we look uh, here, we have a portion of the Springfield zoning code. Uh, and that zoning code is going to have some information about the, looks like the floor area ratio. Uh, it's going to have some uh, information about setbacks. It's going to have some information about building height. Uh, what else do we have here? Parking. And all the parking is broken down into different uh, uh, use types and that's what they've given us. So we've got the zoning map, which said it was a B33. 
Uh, we've got what the neighborhood looks like, which gives you a sort of a sense of what's going on. We've got uh, information about uh, the uh, uh, setbacks, uh, the FAR, the uh, height uh, uh, requirements uh, from the zoning. We've got uh, some proposals and analysis of environmental information. We've got a phase one environmental report, and we have the program. So uh, let's go back to the question and start to think about uh, how this would work. So question number one, given the needs and requirements for this use at this site, what is the approximate minimum size for the parking lot? So we have a couple different uh, 15 cars, 30 cars, 40 cars, no parking is required. So clearly this is gonna be a combination of uh, the program, because that's where we're gonna talk about how big our building is, and the uh, uh, zoning code, because that's where we're gonna talk about uh, how many cars per square foot or per person or how they uh, wanna uh, define it. Um, so uh, if you remember back to looking at the program, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, how big the building would be uh, and uh, in the sort of building size for the zoning purposes, uh, we're talking about 40,000 square feet um, because that's the part that is uh, the sort of habitable section. That's the part that's going to be uh, focused on uh, for the uh, uh, zoning code. It's four stories, 10,000 uh, square foot per floor. Now remember, as we go along, as you start getting into uh, more aspects of the design, once you start finalizing the design, some of these numbers might change and you would have to actually go back and review to make sure that you had enough parking spaces because you have to start somewhere. So we're starting with the numbers from the program, but in fact, as we design it out, it may be slightly different and we might be able to reduce that parking count a little bit or maybe we have to increase it a little bit. So if we start looking at uh, the parking count, we can see there's a graph here uh, and it says no off-street parking is required for non-residential uses on lots uh, abutting pedestrian streets. Well, that's the street we're on. Um, so what they're talking about there is they're trying to encourage uh, the idea of people uh, biking and moving around and encouraging uh, small businesses and things like that. So there's no uh, parking is required for the first 10,000 square feet. And then after that, there are requirements. So uh, if we find the sort of appropriate level of uh, use, we're not in the residential zone, so that doesn't really make any sense for us. Uh, we're not uh, a commercial structure, we are a business structure. Uh, so. Uh, are we a business structure that is uh, uh, in a uh, residential business focus, meaning that it's a small scale and uh, tucked into uh, uh, a residential setting? Uh, and the answer is no, that's not really appropriate for us. Uh, if we look at number two, a pedestrian street focus, any large scale commercial structure that faces more than 25 feet onto a pedestrian street, in quotes. Well, that's definitely us right there. And then business three would be large scale business use. Um, but it doesn't mention the pedestrian use, so we clearly fall into the business two in that category. And in terms of the parking count, it says no spaces for the first 10,000 square feet, one space for every 1,000 square foot after. And then it also talks about bike parking. Uh, so if our building is 40,000 square feet, we subtract the 10, uh, that leaves us 30,000 square feet. Uh, then we have one parking space for every 1,000 square foot, so that's 30 parking spaces. However, uh, you may have noted that we were near the transit location. And uh, if we look down in some of the caveats down here, it says parking count decrease for transit served locations. All projects in a B-3, well, let's take a look. Were we B-3? Yep, we were B-3-3. So all projects in a uh, dash three, B-3 dash three, or C-3 dash three district located within uh, 1,300 feet of a rail station entrance or other significant transit stop are eligible for decreasing the parking count by 50% upon approval of the zoning department. So our assumption, we're still in the planning phases, we haven't had the discussion probably yet with the zoning department, but our assumption is that actually that 30 uh, parking count would actually be reduced by half 
and would be 15. So when we look on the uh, question, that would be answer A, 15 cars.